like you said, he's got three rings, right? And just to clarify, none of those rings are with Connor, right? Is Frazier Minton going to have more points than Sapkowski this year? Frazier Minton sucks at hockey. This guy might not even be an NHLer, so we got to settle down on that one. I laid no. Minus 160 on will they show her holding a drink in her hand. They are two points behind the St. Louis Blues in the wild card, and they are oh, The Blues are dog water. The Blues suck. And the Blues like, are the worst <laughs> of those four teams that I mentioned by a mile. And that's, they're, like, they're not a good hockey team. Care, like have some set of balls, have some response, have some pride for what the hell goes on on the ice. It's so absurd. I'm looking forward to the parade, uh, but that's going to be later in the year. See, I'd rather have so money in there than have garbage soda balls. I would rather stack a bunch of garbage that I have in the corner of my room over here than have garbage soda balls in that. April 9th, welcome back to Edgeburg, presented by Stacks. And oh my goodness, there's been a uniform change between the <laughs> before the show and the intro. Look at that. That's awesome. Right now, that is a sweater oh. if I've ever seen one. I will give oh. credit where credit is due. That logo is beautiful. If you're listening on podcasts right now, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see it, but maybe you can at least head over to the YouTube and get a glimpse of Matt's beautiful, beautiful Canucks sweater that he's wearing right now. And as of, of course, I am joined by a Every Tuesday, Matt Russell, but filling in here today for Alex Moretto. So money sports hopping on. We appreciate so money and we appreciate him, especially after last night and the rooting interests that were taking place opposite of each other. But before we can get into any of that, I want to remind everybody, if you haven't yet, make sure to sign up at Stacks Betting Exchange. If you're sick of getting limited and profiled, Stacks is a unique sports betting exchange that offers higher limits and better pricing. Stacks offers a fair and real-time marketplace for users to bet on the outcome of sporting events, offering better odds in a peer-to-peer marketplace. Stacks is the best option for anyone who wants to wager on live sports. Make sure to add Stacks to your list of outs and sign up today. The option is yours at Stacks. Head on over there. So, money, let's just get it out of the way. Let's not uh, beat around the bush here. Um, I said to Matt before, I, I apologize for what happened, but I mean, I, I root for you guys and your bets all year. I'm I'm openly okay with you guys betting against the Leafs here on the show. Yesterday was the one day I just can't do it. I just couldn't do it. It, it was, it's the, it's Toronto against Kyle Dubas. It was, had nothing to do with the Penguins. It had nothing to do with the number. It was against Kyle Dubas and the principle of it. Can we, can we get over it? I, I'm sorry that it ha- I, I had to do that. Are we okay? I need some time, Zach. I okay. need some. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need some time with this. Um, you put, you put a personal belief or a, per, a personal beef, um, ahead of monetary interests. <laughs> if you had bet the Leafs, it would have been different. Right. I would have been okay if you had money on the Leafs, and um, and 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 we were against each other in that sense. I'd be okay. But for this, um, I, I I will need some time, Zach. Zach, I told you before the show that I was fine with it. You got to do what you got to do. Zach, I lied right to your face. That was appalling. <laughs> that was one of the most offensive things I've ever seen in this Edgework community or in any community, frankly. So you should be ashamed of yourself, quite frankly. So uh, I, I've, I'm, I've got my many reasons I've got the sweater on. Uh, one in honor of our guy, So Money, being here on a Tuesday. Uh, we're going to go reverse disgusting with it, though. Don't worry. There's probably going to be some disgusting plays a little bit later on. Uh, yeah. You guys are talking about Leafs and Penguins as if that game mattered in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to say it. Biggest win, biggest game of the season for the Canucks last night. Uh, and when I bring out the uh, the sweater, then, you know, it isn't just necessarily because so money's here, but because we also have to do a little celebrating. Uh, I was going to bring it out. We talked about this, I think, about a month and a half ago. I was going to bring the sweater out when they beat the Leafs. I then realized that we had some bigger um, eggs to fry or not fry uh, after (laughs) after that game. So I I, I decided to save it a little bit. Uh, I could save it for after, you know, this podcast, when this podcast gets spinned off into a playoff late night, uh, me and so money at like one o'clock in the morning, uh, Mm -hmm. watching overtime Canucks playoff games and, you know, spending the intermissions just naming old Canucks. You know, just sitting around and naming old Sean Antosky. 
Yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, you know, just just doing <laughs> that one night. Uh, that, cool, man, so. Yeah, that's going to be an electric. Jim Sandlack is going to be a great. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a great program. Tony Tandy. Um, so uh, yeah, I figured you know what we can't wait for that to happen. Um, it's time after last night's big W for the Canucks and so money coming on. It's like all right, we got to get serious with this uh, with the sweater. I'm not. I'm not ever allowing Moretto to do this to me again. You, the two of you Canucks fans on here just going back and forth against me. I can't. I can't do it. Uh, but what we can do is dig into some picks. We have a lot of games on the schedule here tonight. Thirteen. So we'll get into those. The gentlemen here uh, alongside me have come prepared with their own bets. But once we get through those, if you guys have questions in the chat, you see there's games that we haven't covered. Send them in there. We'll try to answer those as well. Uh, and on top of that, we will take a look and just see if there's anything else on the board that these two uh, have not quite gotten to yet or maybe have some interest in, but maybe they'll get there throughout the day. And if you're looking for a quick update, obviously you can find us in the BetStamp app and the Find Better section is Edgework HQ. But if not, just quickly for everyone uh, who's wondering how we've done on the season so far, started off hot, got out of the gates and kept running. And if we've taken a little bit of a fall lately, but we are still up on the season with a record of 329, 355, and 14. We still are hitting a 1.1% ROI over 698 bets with uh, up 7.6 units on the season. Let's get that going here tonight. We did we, we did go one and two last night. We lost 0. 0.5 units, but that, that's all good. We'll keep it moving. Plenty of hockey left for for the remainder of the regular season and then into the playoffs. And let's start here tonight with the New York Rangers taking on the New York Islanders in New York. There we see the Islanders plus one thirteen. We're seeing the Rangers minus one twenty two. Best price available right now. So money. What's your interest in this game tonight? So you look at the Islanders right now, right? They're, they've won four straight. They've won five of six, six of eight, whatever it is, right? Are they really winning these games, though? You look at the Nashville game, right? They were they were dominated in that game, right? Um, they had no business winning that game, snuck out a 2 nothing win. Uh, a 2 nothing win. They beat Columbus 4-2, fine, whatever, right? Like, you, sh you, you should beat Columbus. They beat Chicago 2-1 in a game they shouldn't have won either, right? So now it's not just a kind of a better team in Nashville. It's a shitty team in Chicago that is dominating you as well, right? So um, that that leaves me with more questions right now on the Islanders. They've propelled themselves into the playoff race, and we know what that means in the East, right? Once you are in the playoffs, chances are you're going to start tanking. We're where we've we we've, we've seen this all season um and i think this the the same holds true for the islanders here right like they're not they're not a good enough team to be reeling off four or five straight wins here right now so um i am betting the rangers i'm just trying to confirm the price here we're at um the mid minus 120s right now yeah so um it 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 has gone down a bit since we um since we went on air so um <clears throat> i would like to hear um Matt's thoughts on this. Um, I I do like the Rangers here. Um, I will be betting them. And, of course, finally on a night when I actually do need the Rangers to win, um, we'll see if they come through here. I mean, they, 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 they like to stick it to me when I'm against them. So I'm, I'm on them right now. So let's, let's see what they do for me here. Yeah, I, I don't have a play in this game. Uh, you know, these matchups – these like Metro matchups around the New York area, when it comes to like home ice advantage and stuff, I really have kind of a hard time measuring that and whether there actually is any home ice advantage mm -hmm. for a team like the Islanders against, I mean, honestly against either team, but particularly against the Rangers, it's not like the Rangers are traveling or anything like that. Right. So, and we saw in the playoffs last year was the devils and the Rangers, like the road team. I think they won like five out of the six uh, games. I think it was a six game series, maybe it was a seven game series, but the road team had, had you know, pretty significant success. So, um, you know, playing around with the numbers, taking away home ice advantage, like I still can't really get to a side that, that I'm dying to bet. Uh, so many makes, you know, obviously really strong points. I, I only sort of wonder if the market has really taken anything from those games from the, that the Islanders have won. Right. Like have, you know, normally it's like, oh, they're on a four game, five game, six game winning streak or, you know, six out of eight. Like here they come, you know, on a playoff run and it's and the market's like, oh, yeah, OK, like above average team, like, you know, totally. in. And I, I don't 
have that just yet. Like I don't have that overreaction that I'd normally be looking for that would sort of um, probably create a little bit of value here for me. So uh, this is a pass for me. Um, but unlike Zach, I'm going to absolutely support so money in his uh, way. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh my God. We'll yeah. do this one for a Lugomir Vice. <laughs> I'm going to deal with this all show. I'm sorry. The combination of old Canucks players that just random Canucks players. That you know, you know, funny thing team about Lubomir Vice, um, he, he, <laughs> he, he came after, um, after, after the Bray era, he oh. was, he was said to be the next Bray, smaller guy, um, fast. And like, um, a young soul money was sitting there saying that we found our replacement ready to go. I think he scored like something like 10 goals or something like in his whole NHL career. Um, but yeah, funny story there. Yeah, we'll um, we'll 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 get into a lot of these, Zach. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah Zach, I if you want to, if you want to break down the Troy Gamble era, we can absolutely do that. It was <laughs> it wasn't a great time for goaltending. We had to get to, you know we had to get Kirk McLean in there as fast as we possibly could. Just hitting me with funny thing about Lubomir Vice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unrelated to Dale Weiss, by the way, which is you know, something to really <laughs> something to really think about. <laughs> Uh, well, Matt, you talked about these Metro teams in the New York area there. Uh, we talk about the Islanders, the Rangers. Well, we got one here with the New Jersey Devils kind of within that range. And they're hosting the Maple Leafs tonight. And we're finding price at plus 103, best best number out there uh, that we see for them. Minus 114 on the Leafs on the other side. Toronto obviously coming in on a back-to-back. -back. And we see a total at six and a half right now. And that one is pushing out towards the seven, it looks like right now. We're seeing minus 125s in spots, uh, minus 130 in some other some other books. What are your thoughts on this game, side or total-wise, Matt? Yeah, it's interesting. The Devils beat the Leafs uh, a couple of weeks ago, 6-3 game on the road. J Jake Allen making all but 40-something saves in that game. Um, I, I, I've been having trouble recently trying to figure out what the market is up to with regards to the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? They've been, I think, the last two Tuesdays, or at least sort of two out of the last three Tuesdays, perhaps. Uh, I've been on the Maple Leafs because I thought that they were getting sort of downgraded further than they needed to be, you know, had a couple of injury issues there. Obviously, Mitch Marner was out for a period of time, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Leafs back to being healthy. Is that is this sort of like an overcompensation going the other way? And now all of a sudden the team that was, what were they, minus 130 at Philadelphia, I think a couple of weeks back, or at least uh, maybe even last week, are now basically a pick -em against the Devils. And as much as the Devils have you know, obviously not had the season that they've wanted, I still think the Devils are a better team right you know, today than the Philadelphia Flyers are, right? And so I'm going to take the, you know, we're pretty close to plus money here with the Devils. And, you know, ideally I'd be getting that, but at minus, yeah, there we go. We got a plus 103. So yeah, the most recent one I saw before the show was a minus 102. So we'll probably give this a little time because it seems like the market is kind of going towards the Leafs. And again, like based on the way that the, the market sort of treated the Leafs the last couple of weeks, I don't know that the market knows what to do with this team. So uh, I'm going to wait a little bit longer here, see if we can get a little bit better of a price, but anything with a plus in front of it is going to be worth the play here uh, on the Devils with uh, particularly with the Leafs, you know, playing on a back-to-back -back, travel, all that good stuff. Uh, so money before you give thoughts here, well, for the sake of the show, Matt, you're okay with us locking this in at plus one Oh three on the show, yep. but just kind of for anyone else out there, it's good at plus one Oh three. If yep. you feel that you might be able to get a better number, you could wait as well and just keep looking at that. But we'll lock in plus one Oh three, uh, next official bet. <laughs> I'm fine with this one, Matt. I'm fine if the if the Devils win. I'm I'm happy. Yeah, of course you are now. Oh, thanks, thanks, Zach. <laughs> I appreciate that. I just I needed it was one. I was really one hoping to get your blessing. <laughs> uh, what? Where do you come in on this game here tonight? So money. <laughs> yeah, I agree with uh, I agree with Matt and I agree with Charles in the chat. There, it, it is. Um, is my is my mic on? Is, is it okay? Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, I do agree with uh, Matt. <laughs> and I agree with Charles. <laughs> <laughs> it is a it is a sneaky disgusting pick here, but um, but it makes sense. Um, I think that um, my only concern, my only hesitancy in this game is that um, Matt referenced the uh, game. Uh, I I don't know when they played when the Leafs um when when the Leafs lost six three to the Devils. Um, that wasn't a game that I scored six three. I thought that the Devils yep. were were fairly lucky to win that game. So um, that would be my only concern. Um, Leafs are on a back-to-back. -back. They're pretty much locked in now, I believe, in their um, in their seating. So, 
yeah, so um, I do I, I do agree with Matt there. Um, I, I didn't think the Leafs played that well either last night. Um, unfortunately, Nadalkovich turned into Felix Potran in Game Five of '94 when Greg Adams scored on him. So um, yeah. It was a uh, one of two was, Greg Adams, by the way, that we could reference. Yeah, there were two Greg Adams. That's right. Yeah. Right. So, um, Greg, it, I think one was Greg S. Adams or Greg <laughs> yeah, like A. Yeah, Adams or something. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. It's so like so Alex that was, C. Smith. He doesn't really. It's not really a, a middle name. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. So it was. It was. It, it was unfortunate last night. My point is that I don't think the Leafs played that well. Um, they're on a back to back here. The Devils. Um, the funny thing about the Devils is that I don't think that even though they've lost uh, three of the last four here, I, I I don't think they've given up on the season at all, right? Like, like yeah, yeah, they're not going to make the playoffs, but they're still playing, right? And, um, and um, even though the results have not been there before their um, three-game losing streak, um, they were playing well. And um, even, even through their three-game losing streak, they lost two of those games to Pittsburgh and the Rangers, right? So... Um, so they lost to good competition there. So um, I don't have a problem with the way the Devils are playing. Um, hopefully goaltending stand up, stands up, but that's been the case with them all season. So um, at, so at plus money, yeah, I, 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 do, I do like to look here on the Devils. Yeah, if you're going to bet, if you're not going to bet the Devils because of the goaltending, you would literally never bet on the Devils, which honestly this season was probably a pretty good idea. Um, <laughs> so, but at least going forward, right, we're kind of just uh, going to keep our fingers crossed because they're still scoring. Right. The Devils are still scoring. And honestly, if Alex is here, he might have to throw an over into the mix. But uh, that's not really my scene. So uh, we're going to we're going to test it here with the plus money on the Devils. So so the Devils goaltending, we're talking about their goaltending. That actually re- reminds me of um, and 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 we should probably YouTube this. One of the greatest goals I've seen, uh, Pavel Bure on Chris Terry. Oh, right? yeah. Completely un- undresses the whole New Jersey team, goes in on Terry, huge deep. That was a. Uh, Outstanding, yeah. but one of the one I would say probably Bray's had a lot of highlight goals. This is easily in easily in the top ten. It's in especially if you're going to YouTube. It's de- it's in every beret top ten that there ever yeah. was, um, which is something we're going to go going to go over during the playoffs when uh, So Money and I do our uh, our live stream called After Hour. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah because we're going to go probably an hour too long talking about Pavel Bure alone. <laughs> exactly. How am I going to make it through this show? Um, all right. Well, well, there you go. Second bet locked in here <laughs> of the day. We'll recap all these at the very end of the show. Uh, we'll keep it moving. We've got another. We've got another game to cover here tonight, and that will be the Montreal Canadiens and the Philadelphia Flyers. And we're seeing Montreal hosting Philly at sitting at a, pr- a price of plus one twenty, best out there right now, and minus one thirty one on the other side for the Flyers. We see five and a halfs. So we see some sixes right now. But uh, so money, you've got an interest in a side in this one. And which one is it, and why? I do have an interest, but it's a really, really tricky game here. Um, Flyers, we know about the Flyers. They're um, they're struggling. Maybe they've tuned out that coach. Um, whatever the case, they're not they're not the same Flyers team. Um, and it's not just the losses; it's how they're losing. There's these are. These are well-deserving losses. There's no unlucky losses here, right? Um, either the games have been coin flips where they've made young mistakes and they've lost, or um, or they haven't. Um, they they just haven't played well and they've lost, right? So um, that's tough. Um, Montreal, on the other hand, um, they haven't been playing well either lately, right? So it's really really tough to get there. But then you have to look at the number, right? So Flyers on the road right now. Um, I'm seeing up to there's some places that that are at a low minus 140 right now, right? Like that's that's really tough to get to on the fire. So um, I will bet the Habs. Um, I'll reluctantly bet the Habs um, just because of the of just just because of the number. I think that um, the market has been pretty slow to adjust on on the Flyers dip here, um, and as bad as the Habs are. Um, I don't think that I can justify this number um, that 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 the Flyers are laying here on the road. Reluctantly betting the Habs, Moretto's watching this right now, sitting on the go train on his way downtown, punching windows here and say <laughs> reluctantly. I don't know. I, th- I feel like when I when I, I should I should mention I'm also on the Habs here uh, for starters. Uh, I feel like 
I was thinking that Alex would be is the guy who's normally like trying to stop me from betting on the halves, right? Like I have yeah. to bounce like, you know, what are we, where are we with the goaltenders these days? Like that sort of thing, right? I have to go to Alex for that. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's kind of nice to, to come on and, and have so many, you know, hit us with the halves here so that I can be like, yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Regards to the flyers. Uh, listen, if I was, you know, like Zach or, or like Alex and, and maybe could be more supportive, let's just say, um, of my fellow Edgework teammates, you know, if I was those guys, I would probably mention Saturday, uh, you know, everybody sees the tweets about, you know, who we pick. And yeah, I'd probably say something along the lines of, you know what, there's a lot of minus 120s out there, a lot of minus 110 type bets from our guys. But if you saw last Saturday, there might have been a plus 145 on the Columbus Blue Jackets to beat the Philadelphia Flyers. So maybe that suggests that I'm a little ahead of the curve here on the Flyers being maybe not so great. And as uh, so many mentioned, maybe that a former Canucks head coach has lost his team harder than Bob McCammon back in 1989. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's tough to say. Uh, no, I, 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 he pretty much said everything that needs to be said here. Um, I would play this specifically. Honestly, I was kind of looking for like a plus 110. Um, I, don't, I shouldn't say that. Plus 115 on Montreal here. And we're getting, you know, what? Uh, what's our best number up there, Zach? What? 120 yeah. right now. 120, right? So, yeah, I mean, the, certainly the narrative concept is there for me to be somewhat excited about backing a, a home underdog here, uh, and the number certainly is as well. So, yeah, we're going to take another stab here with the uh, with the Habs. And, and six – sorry, I was just going to say six six goals by by defenseman from from, from Columbus. Or it was as if they had, they had Jeff Brown and Adrian Acoin back there. Yeah. I saw one. I was like, if that's not a young Yerky Lume, I don't know what is. <laughs> um, so, Money, weren't you in support of the Blue Jackets bet there on Saturday as well? I thought I had seen that in the chat. We are all Blue Jackets. Absolutely. I think yeah. um, I have I have vested. See, I I actually support my brothers, right? So that's oh. the that's that's the big difference here. And um, not only that, um, I also have um, a rooting interest, a monetary interest as well in the Flyers missing the playoffs. Mm. Um, not only for them missing, but getting the Penguins in there as well. Right. I, I, uh, I'm i not going to live this one down. I just, I couldn't deal with it. I don't think Moretto could have dealt with it either, in all honesty. I think if we asked him candidly, I don't think he could have dealt with a Penguins win last night, uh, given his disdain for a certain general manager of the Pittsburgh Penguins. But we'll keep it moving. We'll, uh, we'll keep breaking down some games here, more best bets to come. On tonight's schedule and next up we'll take a look at the winnipeg jets on the road against the nashville mereditors and you see nashville right now minus 108 the winnipeg jets minus 102 total of five and a half right across the board and so money you're getting yourself invested in this one here tonight as well aren't you do we really know who who this nashville team is right now right like they 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 go on this street they win like 20 straight games right they lose to the Islanders in a game they should have won. They beat St. Louis in a game they should have lost, right? Um, and then before that, they had lost three straight. And before that, they had won like 50 games, right? So um, I don't know what to make of this Nashville team. What I do know is that I look at the market price here, right? We're seeing uh, Nashville. Yeah, so like Winnipeg is getting a getting a premium here even though nashville is at home because um if, that if, if if nashville was just getting the home ice then they'd be a bigger favorite here so um winnipeg i think they have started turning their season around after after a bit of a lull there um of course it all starts with goaltending with them um they have dallas on deck here but um i suspect hellebuck is going to get the start here they need to get him they need to get them going again. So I think that uh, based on the way that these two teams um, have been perceived to be playing, um, I think that Winnipeg's short here. So um, I do like the Jets. I'm ready to lock them in. Um, just waiting to see. Actually, I'm not waiting to see anything. I'm pretty confident that we're going to get the goaltending matchup that we need. There's no, there's no lineup considerations on my notes here. So yeah, I'm... I'm actually not sure why I haven't bet them already, but yeah, ready to go on the Jets. All right, well, there. if so money's ready to go on the Jets, we're ready to go on the Jets here. As a show, we'll lock that in, minus 102 best price. Matt, I don't know about you, but I was waiting for like a, some kind of Canucks reference to come in at the end there. I thought he was going to say he's waiting for 
something so i i don't even know what it was coming but the I bob essence of confirmation <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah and if, if genny david dadanov preference uh is probably uh in the midst uh I, I don't have anything on this game honestly i i'm i'm with so many in that like i don't really it's not that i don't really know what to make of either team i think it, it's more like i feel like the people the people i didn't feel like people think that the predators are going to be this dangerous team in the playoffs because of the run that they just made and and you know maybe that's because they tune into the tuesday show and they listen to alex uh, wax poetic about the predators on a regular basis and he's honestly he's not wrong of course but the jets you know part of their deal is like they haven't really been unhealthy fully healthy all season long right it's always been like oh this dude's out and that guy's out and that guy's out and then every time each one of them goes out you it almost reminds you that they're even on the team, right? And you're like, man, or not that they're on the team, but that they have so many guys that they can uh, kind of, you know, run out there. So, you know, I think the Jets are going to be this, the quietly dangerous team that, you know, fell out of division contention, probably going to start the playoffs on the road, which like we'll get on, you know, get into this once the playoffs rolled around here. Like I much prefer starting the playoffs on the road than I do at home. Um, so, yeah, like I, between these two teams, like I would certainly lean to the Jets being the most dangerous long term. What does that mean tonight from a short term perspective? I guess I would like to get just a little bit further away from where the Predators peaked before I start like going to fade them. Um, unless my numbers said like, OK, you have to like make this bet. In this case, my numbers kind of just fall in line with where this this spread is, which, you know, I think is telling as well, because a team like th that has had the success that the Predators had for basically a month straight should probably be conceptually a little, you know, more of a favorite than just kind of a pick them against a, you know, theoretical third place team. So I think the market is fully aware that the Jets are, are, are the better team. And so I just kind of have to agree with that. And I, I just think that maybe down the line here in a week or two, once we get into the playoffs, it'll be, you know, I think we'll note that the Jets are a much better team than the Predators. All right, look, let's keep it moving. Another game we got to take a look at here tonight on the schedule, the Carolina Hurricanes here tonight. Uh, I Facing off against the Boston Bruins in Boston, we're seeing the, this Bruins team come in plus 102 on home ice against Carolina, minus 113 on the other side to cause some chaos and a total of five and a half. Matt, what's the approach that you're taking to this game tonight? Oh, uh, not loving life, that's for sure, because we're going with the Carolina <laughs> Hurricanes. And uh, listen, do do the Bruins have the size and toughness of a young Dana Merzen? Yeah, maybe they do, but. <laughs> You know, in this case, based on the uh, short price here with the Hurricanes, which, listen, the market loves the Hurricanes, like the metrics love the Hurricanes. We're all just like gobbling up the Hurricanes wherever we can, you know, get it. Um, so we're never going to get a price this low on the Hurricanes. Maybe that's just, you know, getting an absolute sucker job on me. Um, you know, I, I don't want to mention sucker punches because those that can be hurtful for, for uh, our cohort, cohort um, as Vancouver Canucks fans. Um, but yeah, uh, and honestly, this is this is a numbers play that says that Carolina probably shouldn't be, you know, a pick them honestly against anybody, which is, you know, honestly, just credit to how well Carolina has played basically in the what back half, back three quarters of the season at this point. And, uh, you know, I know Alex is on Florida, you know, going into Boston on Saturday. And I, you know, I saw, I saw him do it. And I'm like, man, this is no fun for you. And then, of course, two days later, I'm doing the same thing. So I haven't learned anything from from our guy, um, you know, getting, uh, you know, t not, not a bad beat necessarily, but of course, an overtime loss on Saturday. So uh, we're going to try it with the Carolina Hurricanes here. And if the Carolina Hurricanes are a Stanley Cup sort of contending style team here, I think they can, they should, they're going to need to probably go in and into some tough road buildings. And as we get closer to the playoffs, right, we're and we didn't talk that much about the game last night, the Canucks and Golden Knights game. You know, we we're looking for some playoff hockey and some of these playoff style, you know, lead up games, right? We've talked about this before, right? When you're playing with non-playoff teams, it's like, all right, let's just out talent them and, and win and, you know, hopefully win. In these games, it's like this is showdown time. So I'm hoping for the best effort out of the Hurricanes tonight and at a, a valuable price. I'm willing to take my chances in Boston. It's going to be a great time. Let's cause some chaos. Let's cause chaos here tonight. Minus yeah. 113 we grab. Yeah. What what was the other ones that we had? Take Storm, take Sur surge. Storm Surge. We were surging. Yeah, which so always we sounded surging. vaguely erotic. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah. Uh so money, are you surging tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that without um this, this is a family show, right? 
I think that's gone out the window at this point. <laughs> All right. So um, I am on the Hurricanes as well. Um, and um, unless if Cam Neely walks through the door for the Bruins here, I think that a lot of the things that Matt mentioned about the size of the Bruins as well, I think plays plays um, plays into this game as well. Carolina playing very, very well. Right, Their only loss here was actually to the Bruins, um, where they lost 4-1 in a game that I had scored nowhere near a 4-1 loss. I had I, I had Carolina winning that game, and um, they were very unlucky to lose that game 4-1. Um, I think uh, Freddie Anderson was in goal. That was um, um, not a great game for him. Um, it was a well below average game for him. So um, I do expect Carolina, and, and, and when they had goaltending struggles earlier in the season, um, I we we kept on saying that they just need average goaltending and this team is elite, right? So um, and for the most part lately they've gotten average goaltending, um, sometimes above average, and we're seeing um, we're seeing it come through in their results as well. So um, I do like I do like Carolina here. I'm not a fan of the way Boston has been playing lately. Yes, they've they're another team that's won four straight, five of six, whatever it is, but. Um, I think there's a bunch of lucky wins that are that are that are in there as well. So um, now we're stepping up in class against a team that um, probably should have beat you a, a week ago or whatever. So um, I do like I, I I do like Carolina here. So I'm with Matt. Um, we're on the Hurricanes. Yeah, and hopefully Boston doesn't trade Barry Peterson for Cam Neely at the last uh, last possible second. And, and you know, is John Toretta, John Tortorella, a young Tom Watt? You know, who's to say? Who's to say? <laughs> Can you imagine the trajectory of the Canucks if they if 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 they had kept Cam Neely and like if he and if he were to develop the same way? And Glenn Wesley. I mean, yeah. those two players for Barry yeah. Peterson. I mean, just. It's a wonder we are even all standing here as a group, you know, or in this case, sitting. Horrible trade, but then I'm comforted with that, uh, with that, with the Naslin Alex Toyanov deal, though, too, right? Like it goes, it's true. Yeah, it if goes you could, both ways. If you could get a bag of pucks for Alex Toyanov, you absolutely do it. But if you can get a guy who's on the Ring of Honor, then you know that's definitely a move you want to make. Ring of Honor, other members of the Ring of Honor of Ring of, Ring of Honor, Zach, go. No. No. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I saw our friend Luke. Uh, he participates in the chat here from time to time. And he I saw him on the weekend and he came up to me and he said, you know, I'm really glad that the Canucks are getting the representation they deserve on this year's show between Matt and so money across Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And I said, well, yep, you're welcome. <laughs> so you're like I'm Orlin sure Kurtenbach would have been proud to. So you know what? Everybody wins. This is going to be like his dream, um, this show here today. So, oh God, hope you enjoy it, Luke. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, all the other Canucks fans in the chat here as well. But, you know, the entertainer that I am, you guys got to go through this whole show, just putting it back on me about all, oh, you know, not supporting you so money last night and, and uh, throwing these Canucks references at me all show. But you guys, you guys have been in unison. You guys have been in sync. You guys have been teaming up. Why not save the game that you guys are mm. kind of in disagreement on here a little bit at least on for last uh, before we wrap up the show and that'll be the Coyotes Kraken game. Matt, why don't you take the floor and explain which side you're on and why here, and then we'll give it over to So Money and he can say why he opposes everything you think and feel about this game. <laughs> everything, everything I believe in life. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, okay. First of all, we're we're. I don't even know if this even qualifies as a lean off. I guess it's. I, I guess it does. Um, it would is betting on the Kraken at like minus one forty or, you know, or shorter like the most disgusting thing we could possibly do. <laughs> yeah. Like they're you know we're gonna reel off here a couple of uh, disgusting plays that you know are disgusting by the sort of letter of the law. But like, I guess my point is like I. I, I show value here on the Kraken, like minus 165 or better is, was sort of, you know, my theoretical target price. There's nothing from either team that would suggest that it wouldn't necessarily be a particularly good idea other than just conceptually actually spending money on the Seattle Kraken, right? Actually paying a price on the Seattle Kraken. So um, that's, that's the holdup for me. Like I, I'm dying for so money to tell me like, not to do it like this is part of this show on a weekly basis is 
you know, a therapy session or just, you know, somebody just talking someone off the ledge. In this case, this is kind of my ledge play where it's like, man, you do you, re you really want to be laying 140 on the Seattle Kraken? Like somebody talk me off of this ledge. They are playing a little bit better lately. They're playing when they play these kind of other junky teams, like they do okay, right? Ducks 3 1, Sharks 4 2, uh, Ducks 4 2, uh, Ducks 4 0. Uh, you know, like so we're, we're, I mean, they went to OT with the Coyotes, uh, you know, a few weeks back. I certainly don't want anything to do with the crack. It's weird. I like they're a bad team. I don't want them and anything to do with them as an underdog, but I actually kind of like them as this sort of like second to last tier team. And so when they're playing these last tier teams, I'm a little bit more comfortable, especially at home playing the Kraken. But again, it's like, all right, I'm, I'm, I don't really want to play them as a favorite sort of from an actual dollars and cents perspective. It's so money. You're a help, help on me. the side here. Yeah, I think um, I think Matt touched on it though. It um, it it does come down to do you really want to bet the Kraken at this number, right? And um, yeah. and it's not just the Kraken. It's with the it's the Kraken without McCann and Dunn as well, right? Um, and I and I think like that 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 needs to be adjusted for. Um, he Matt's right. They 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 have been playing well lately. Um, competition hasn't been that great, right? Like we have three ducks in there we have a sharks in there um dallas they lost three nothing kings they lost five two right so yeah. um so so they beat the shitty teams for the most part or they play i should say beat they they play well against the shitty teams for for the most part and they um of course they struggle when when they have to step up in in, in competition i would argue though that arizona right now should not be classified as those other shitty teams right like they like they have been playing well we're seeing um when Arizona lost, when they didn't look good, it was a 2-1 loss against the Canucks and an 8-5 loss against the Rangers. Um, beyond that, in the last 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 games, um, they've been fine, right? So um, that would be my, my my argument here is that um, it looks like Arizona is priced the way that they would have been priced a month ago when they were struggling and not the way that they're should be priced right now when they're actually playing playing well I'm, and i'm talking about like arizona standards right like mm -hmm. like like at the end of the day they are a shitty team but they're not as shitty as the teams that seattle has been beating yeah we're like we're dealing in like levels of shittiness that it's just yes. it's it's quite murky that you know we got the we got the rubber boots on we're like wading in we're like how deep is this gonna go like are the are the rubber boots high enough and if they're not high enough like that's going to be bad because we're going to get shit in our boots. And I don't want to get shit in my boots here with the Seattle Kraken. So probably a stay away. If somebody wants to play the Coyotes, I'm going to support him in that. I just, you know, I needed to talk this out. And, uh, you know, it's just at this point in the season, playoffs around the corner. It's just not worth it for me. So thank you. That's so muddy. Are you there on the Canucks? You want to lock one in? Uh, we do have Coyotes. a plus one twenty seven. Zach, just because the Canucks are on your mind twenty four seven, man, Coyotes. and you just want to talk Coyotes. about old Canucks Coyotes. all the time, Coyotes. you're like, oh, can we please talk oh, about yeah. Craig Janney? Like, you know, what a weird trade that Peter Nedved situation was. It's like Zach, like, relax, man. We're trying to talk about the other thirty one teams in the NHL. Peter Nedved. So that actually reminds me of another story, right? So um, after after the ninety three series that um that the Canucks lost to the Kings, um, they they lost that in like six games, I believe. There was um. There was a controversy or supposed controversy in Vancouver because Peter Nevitt, right after the game, he goes up to Wayne Gretzky to um to uh, get him to uh, sign his stick, right? And like it was a big deal that like you just lost your series and you're going up to um to uh, get a get an autograph essentially from a player that beat you. Nedved, Nedved did the jersey tuck in honor of Wayne Gretzky, so we yeah. probably should have seen this coming, you know? Yeah. In theory. In theory. Yeah, absolutely. Oh um, but yeah, I mean, um, oh, we, we can't go through a connection without talking about Pat Quinn, right? Like we need to, we need to pay some respect sure. there, right? So like, yeah, let's have a moment of silence there. That's, and then... that's you know what? Yeah. Zach's that's choked up already. Yeah. yeah. See? see, see, Pat Quinn is one, is one Canuck that, that like he's, re he's revered everywhere he went, right? Like LA, Philadelphia, Toronto. Ottawa. I forgot about that. Yeah. Remember when he almost killed Bobby Orr? Yeah, yeah. I guess not Boston. Probably less, yeah. less revered in Boston, and they take revering <laughs> seriously in Boston. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh my God, you guys 
have really done a number on my brain today. I can't <laughs> believe that came out. It just made me nuts. Uh, Coyotes plus 127. So money, is this official play? Yeah. Paying off. What are your thoughts? Official play? All right, there you go. Yeah. Lock in plus 127. Uh, now, before we get to any of the final cleanup here where we just recap all the picks that we have, First, I want to remind people, if you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button on today's stream. Less than 50% of the people watching have hit the like button. That may have to do with uh, an abundance of Canucks talk. They're just hesitant to hit the like. I don't know. But if you are watching, you did enjoy it. She was having a great time. Button, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'll throw it to you here, you gentlemen here. We, we have 13 games on tonight's schedule. I think we only went through uh, six or seven of them there. Matt, are there any other games that you're looking at today? You don't oh. have plays in right now. Uh, you haven't been able to bet. You're waiting on, like, you're just kind of sitting here thinking, hey, maybe throughout the rest of the day I'll get there, but not right now. Well, listen, I'm having a great time, but we have veered away from our usual sort of thematic Tuesdays, right? Where yes. normally it's how gross is too gross. <laughs> there are some grossness that I would... <laughs> I always hate to use the term recommend, but there are gross plays that I think are, and again, when I say worth making, I mean theoretically worth it, not sort of, you know, are you be looking to actually deal with this kind of stuff? Uh, let's get the Ottawa, Florida game. Odds up here, Zachy boy. Uh-oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Plus 214 is too high. Plus 214 is too high for the Ottawa Senators, uh, even, again, with Florida. Especially now, again, we're – and this is no narrative, conceptual, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now we get into sort of this next week or so lock-in season, right, where – we have some guys that are, you know, the Aaron Eckblads of the world are like, yeah, he's going to be back for the playoffs, but we're not bringing him back anytime sooner, et cetera, et cetera, right? And that game against Boston where they lose that game. And by the way, like the idea that neither the Panthers or the Hurricanes are going to win their division is absolutely offensive to my sensibilities. And it now certainly appears like Florida is kind of out of that running as, uh, as so many mentioned, right? We're, we're looking at, uh, at some almost you know, pretty much locked in matchups and all that. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to sort of look for spots to fade Florida and Ottawa is the type of team that again, we talk about all the time. Like if you just give me some average goaltending, unlike the Kraken where they're cracking are sort of like just lingering in kind of the like below average, they're not going to give you that like high end game. And they're probably, unless the goaltending really stinks that night, not going to give you that much of a low end game. They're just going to probably get pumped by the, the better teams and they're going to probably beat the teams below them. Ottawa, as you know, Zach is capable of like throwing together good games. They have the high end talent. The talent that, that was supposed to be, as you know, you guys have mentioned before, you know, supposed to have turned around the Senators in the offseason. Well, it didn't necessarily work out for a season long perspective. They won but, the offseason. But the they, won the, they won the offseason. They didn't win too many games uh this season but the games some of the games that they did one were against some really really strong competition and so from a sort of sniffing it out standpoint and from a numbers uh odds perspective ottawa plus 214 is a bet for me two more in that in that milieu uh i don't know if they're gonna get six goals from their defensemen but the columbus blue jackets also kind of fit that bill against tampa bay uh what do we have up for the odds Zachy boy Hit me with them. 290. 290. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, at this point, we are going to get some of these like crazy outlier type results because these teams are kind of just, you know, shoulder shrugging their way home here. Is it likely that the Blue Jackets win this game? Of course it is not. But at plus 290, like that number is, you know, significantly too high for me, right? Like I have it, I'll put it this way, right? Like my target was plus 265. Right. I don't even know that I would play it at plus 265 just because I don't necessarily want to be involved in it. But if you're going to start right. handing out plus 290s, and who knows by the end of the day, if we get up to a plus 300 situation, then like, yeah, all right, fine. The ja Jackets haven't been playing that bad uh, most recently. And then finally, uh, I'm not going to do it just because like, God, I'm so out on this team. We've talked about them before. But Minnesota, Minnesota and Colorado. What do we got from the odds perspective there, Zachy? Plus one seventy three on Minnesota. Yeah, that's what I had yeah. to. That, that was the that was the best available. This one, like my my sort of 
looking to bet was plus 164. So it isn't quite as egregious. But again, from an outlier, you know, pricing standpoint, you know, you can see some plus 160, some plus 165. I think that's the appropriate price, whereas you can get some plus 173 out there. That's a theoretical deal. You know, again, I don't know if that's something you actually want to pull the trigger on per se. But these are, you know, if the guy, if the gang out there wants disgusting plays, there you go. There's the three of them that are sort of um, more traditional disgusting plays versus our uh, sneaky disgusting, which we had earlier on. I did lock in the sentence there, Matt, for us on the show. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely going to bet that. It's, it's seven, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so money. Are there any other games out there that you're looking at? I haven't quite got there. Or, uh, are you going to get sneakily disgusting tonight? Probably so not as disgusting. disgusting as, yeah, pro, <laughs> pro, probably not as disgusting as Matt because that's a how could you? Game. Yeah, that's a pretty high bar to get to. How could you? Yeah, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> a couple of games that I do have my eye on, not ne- and not ne- necessarily from a betting perspective tonight, but more so kind of looking into the future. Look at Columbus Tampa Bay. Um, Vasilevsky is conf- is, uh, is confirmed. I'm I'm more looking to see how Tampa Bay handles the rest of the season. Um, they're locked in, veteran team. They know kind of how much to pull back, how much to pull, how, and, how, and how much to push forward to get ready for the playoffs. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I have a Tampa um, Eastern Conference future, so I'm fully, fully invested in the way that they handle themselves um, going, going, going into the playoffs, knowing that they're locked, locked into their seating. So I'm looking at at, at Tampa Bay how they play tonight against a team that they should be able to name their number on. And um, also going forward, what they do with their, with their, um, with kind of their personnel. Washington, Detroit, another big game uh, for me personally. Uh, that's a big number on Detroit, but um, Washington. I kind of want to see if um, if they peaked when we were pumping up Carberry, and um, if they've kind of um, kind of lost their lost their momentum or their edge a little bit here. So um, that's that's a game I got my eye on. Um, and then there was another game that I was looking at, uh, Minnesota, Colorado as well. Um, tough one because I don't think, um, Colorado has been playing that well. And, uh, Minnesota is a tough team to read as well. Right. So, um, yeah, they could be out of it, but again, you, you got to look at the number though. Right. And like, if Colorado is not playing that well, um, Minnesota is up there. I just hope that, um, Minnesota doesn't pull their goalie in the second period or like do something (laughs) stupid, like what, like Mike Keenan would do. Right. So, that's um, right. That's yeah, right. so that would be my only concern, but um, but but the number is there on the wild, so um, it's if that gets any higher, um, then 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 I'll be on the wild as well. Really, more of a Roger Nielsen thing, I think. That sort of yes. avant-garde, uh, you know, um, th- strategy with regards to you know pulling goalies or what did he leave the go- he wanted the goalie to leave the stick on the goal line whenever they uh, pulled the goalie. Um, he was. I think, that, I think that was a Roger Nielsen former. Fan he, he was. He was well ahead of his time. Yeah, absolutely. Matt, um, just one more. Remember the Roger Nielsen hockey school being huge here in Toronto. Do you remember when that was a big thing? No, because I'm not from here. Um, if, if you hadn't, if that you hadn't picked, when, if you hadn't picked up, on the, up, you would have been he, here when I was. When if I, you haven't picked up on this entire show, happened. Zach. Uh, no. Um, just w- really quickly, um, not to, not derail, but rail the show. Um. The Vasilevsky thing, you know, it's obviously like we all have the highest regard for Vasilevsky, but it's interesting just kind of conceptually mentioning that, you know, whether he's starting, whether he's not starting. It's a guy with a minus two and a half goal save above expected since the All-Star break, right? And so like, okay, at any given moment, I think based on our respect for Vasilevsky and, and, and his entire season hasn't been particularly good either, don't get me wrong, but like just, it's not like he's like all of a sudden gotten hot since the All-Star break, like he's a below average goaltender right now. And so that's just something that I think we need to kind of, you know, have our you know heads on a swivel on when it comes to like, okay, who's starting in net, who's not starting in net and trusting that he is going to, you know, be an above average goaltender as much as like we believe in him from a resume perspective. I mean, the guy had hip surgery, I believe it was right in the off season. It's like hips kind of important and it would be great if, you know, he had come back and was, you know, the old Vasilevsky, but he hasn't. And that's something, you know, I, you know, I know so funny sitting there going like, but my future ticket, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's not ideal for, for the lightning. And it's certainly not something that we should be particularly afraid of whether he's uh, starting or not. When Jonas Johansson, you know, also sucks, but uh, you know, is worse. You know, at least that's sort of an element where it's like, well, are you playing an, an average goaltender as a backup? 
The answer to that is no, they're not either because, you know, Jonas Johansson hasn't been particularly good either. So two bad options essentially for the Lightning right now, which is kind of a weird thing to say in the uh, Andre Vasilevsky era. So just kind of be careful on that one and, and why I might like the, uh, the Blue Jackets, um, again, at this price. All right, let's recap all the picks that we've got for today. That'll do it for us, for the games and bets that we have. We appreciate everyone in the chat. Again, if you do want to follow through or follow along with all the picks that we give out on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you want to see what we've done this season, you want to see what we've done as an entire show last year into this year, you can find all of those in the Bet Stamp app in the Find Better section as Edgework HQ. But for our picks here tonight, let's rip through them here starting with the Carolina Hurricanes, where we're going to be causing chaos in Boston uh, with the Canes money line minus 113. We're also going to take the New York Rangers money line minus 122, and that one looks like it's moving a bunch there, at least at stacks where we have locked in that bet, minus 122 to minus 130 now. Yeah, yeah the market's on the move on that one. Right. Uh, yeah, you can see that there up on the screen right now. Uh, as well, we're going to take the New Jersey Devils money line against the Leafs tonight, plus 103. The Habs money line against the Flyers, plus 120. The Senators money line against the Florida Panthers, plus 214. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets against the Nashville Predators. We'll take Winnipeg money line, minus 102. And finally, the Arizona Coyotes uh, money line, plus 127 there against the Seattle Kraken. Those are all the bets that we've got for uh, for you guys tonight. That's a well, this is, I think, the first straight up money line only show that we've done uh, all season long. I, I I would have to look back on it, but I can't remember one where it's been like only money lines, no totals, no draws, no player props, no first periods, just straight up money lines. So I don't know if that's fun. stubborn or just you know the last vestiges <laughs> of a will to live or what, but uh, yeah. <laughs> No, I look at that as a as a as a meat and potato show, kind of like the uh, Canucks teams that were um, that were that were grinding through it, right? Like after the uh, after the Messi era, when they were trying to get back on track, those yeah. kind of teams with uh, Trent Clyde in there. Yeah, it's I a real that, it's a real Dave Scatchard of a show. Today. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Peter Schaefer would have been proud. Yeah. All right, that's it for us for today's show. Um, do you guys have any last minute? references you need to get in here like uh yeah sure i'm, I'm mike sillinger um okay. you know he played for everybody though yeah i just i'm just trying to reach across the aisle to everybody out there because i think he played for 11 teams uh what jason strudwick you know, I don't know. mike ridley mm -hmm, absolutely brian noonan that's cameo a good appearance one. yeah cameo, cameo appearance i mean yeah listen are we gonna go obvious you know Alexander McGillney, maybe you've heard of him, oh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but no, we don't. We don't have all day here, Zach. We're gonna again. We'll, we're gonna save that to, for after hours, uh, which is just me and someone's show. I got one for you, Matt Sundin. Mm -hmm. No <laughs> greater, no greater moment in uh, in Leafs history than when Matt Sundin stepped out on the ice for his first shift, took one mini circle, turned around, and went off after nine seconds. That was uh, one of the great great moments of our time that nine second first shift we knew what we were getting ourselves into i think at that point <laughs> he did score that shootout goal though i was in that i was i was there for that so money i awesome. was in the stands buddy right there yeah, yeah. probably the greatest yeah. moment in uh, moment. in matt Sandin's career yeah a real, a real yeah i mean certainly in that building i would say maybe not for his entire no wait <laughs> never mind Anything else from you, so money? Anything else you got for me? No, I'm good. I'm just I I just got to think thinking about uh, the the Alex McGillney trade when they traded a uh, Mike Pekka for him. It was a 90, 95, I believe. And uh, yeah, you, you, yeah, because Pekka was on the ninety four team, and Pekka actually had a pretty good career. A big hitter. He would lay out guys were, were right over center. Um, People love I, that. Guy. Yeah, I, I I believe he won a Selkie as well. I would need to um, go back and look at that. But um, yeah, he had a very a very understated career. Well, we'll have that ready for after hours. O U R S, <laughs> not H O U R S, just O U R S. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. That's a great All idea. Right. Of course it is. So money, we'll, we'll I came up with it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much to everyone who tuned in here today. So money, we appreciate you filling in, Matt. 
glad to see you as always here on this Tuesday. Morning. Always a pleasure. As disgusting Jack. as it was, it's it's always a pleasure. So I'm glad that you, you and everybody pleasure. else have survived the uh, the thing that took the internet ablaze, the thing that was really hard to look at. Of course, I'm talking about Zach eating eleven uh, uncooked <laughs> eggs. <laughs> yes, so I'm glad. Yeah, you cool. that. Don't look directly at it. Don't, yeah, look don't look, do not it. look directly at it. <laughs> Thanks so much to everyone who tuned in here today. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 10 p.m. One, Eastern time. Go ahead. So one, 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 one quick thing. Um, the Toronto number's on the move because Jack Hughes is out. Okay. That, there you go. Oh, okay. just came on. So um, just if, if we so let's wait for that to over adjust <laughs> a bit. Um, and then and then and then we'll yeah. and then I'm well, I still like the devils, but we just right. gotta wait until that or that adjust. So we talked about on the show about how I'm waiting to bet it. And we are like, oh, let's we'll just put it in now. What's How does this yeah, work? Fuck. Yeah, we're kind of. Uh, I guess we're just. Gonna... It's on me. I'll take it. I'll take it. All That's right. on me. Yeah. So if it loses, Matt, you tweet out later. What an <laughs> idiotic bet by Zach. <laughs> when it, yeah, when plus 120 loses, we're going to blame Zach for plus 102 losing. So Yes, exactly. Uh, all right, that, that's it. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in here today. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. More picks and previews. Enjoy the games tonight. Hit the like button on your way out. Good luck on your bets. Stay back.